what happened was the other day the the worst happened hey guys if you're rving you're thinking about coming up with inverter backup system if you're thinking about mooch docking boondocking dry docking uh and especially if you have animals you may want to stick around and check this out we do some testing on our inverter and we have some surprising results Hey guys, welcome. I'm Chris. This is a Salty Trip channel, and we are some full-time RVers that uh, have been doing a building a Victron Multi Plus Two 24 volt inverter system to power our rig. But we're gonna have to start from the beginning if you're new here, and we're gonna kind of talk about why we got what we got and where we got to this point. Something terrible happened that is basically worst case scenario that why we built this system for actually happened. But luckily. We have the system that we did and it made me think and we started doing some tests. All right, let's uh, just start from the beginning. Well, when we first got this rig, it's a Keystone Cougar 2020 315 RLS. You know, it has a residential fridge, which, you know, runs off 120. So if you move from place to place, as soon as you unplug from shore power, it stops working. So we wanted to make sure we got an inverter that would power that while we're moving from place to place. And also we wanted to make sure that we got an inverter system to start off with that we can build from. And because eventually we would like to do some like major boondocking and move around and stuff. Eventually when we start moving more and traveling more, we want to be able to stop somewhere, run an AC or even live off grid in like a BLM land uh, with solar and our inverter. Maybe not even have to run a generator. So we decided to go with the Victron system because it's pretty reliable and it's very upgradable. So we started out with a 24 volt 3000 VA, which is not really 3000 watts. It's more like 2400 watts of usable power, of constant usable power. But it can kind of like spike up to like 3000 watts, but not for very long. Like if you see uh, inverted that says like 3000 watts, that means it can run 3000 watts. If it says VA, they're just kind of pumping up the numbers, but it actually, whenever it says VA, it actually can only run and sustain about 80% of that, whatever that VA number is. And like with the Victron 3000 watt VA, it can run 2400 watts co consistently. And the reason we didn't go 12 volt when we went 24 volt is because when you go to 24 volt, you basically cut all that 20, 12 volt amperage in half. The higher the voltage, the less the amperage you need. So the smaller wires, less heat you have to worry about. So initially we got that just to run the refrigerator when we were going from to and from places. The second place we went to had lots of power issues. Every time a storm would come by, not even like a horrible storm, just any kind of thunderstorm in the afternoon, we would get power glitches. Sometimes it would go off for like a half a second. Sometimes it would go off for just a few seconds. Sometimes it'd be off for like a, you know, a half a minute to a minute. Usually not very long, but it's enough to, uh, you lose power to everything. So the Wi-Fi would have to restart, the microwave would have to be reset, the TV, the Amazon Fire Stick and everything would have to reboot and everything like that. So we started to worry about like, okay, well, what if it goes off and doesn't come back on? So we wanted to make sure that the, you know, at least one AC would be running if for some reason the power went out and we need something for the puppies. And then I did try to run the AC just by itself with using the inverter and it would not do it it kept tripping the inverter it was just too much power if you know how the air conditionings work is you know the fan will kick on first which is not much it's like you know 250 300 watts and then the compressor kicks on and the way that works is when that compressor first kicks on it jumps the amperage up really high and that's a you know opens up for a lot of wattage and which most inverters and generators you know, smaller ones can't handle and they'll kick them off. Then we realize we have to get a, a soft start for it because it's just not going to be enough. So then what the soft start does, you install it on your AC unit and you just wire it in. And I have a whole nother video about how to do that. But what it does is when that compressor kicks on, it slowly raises the amperage to operating instead of the high, quick peak of amperage you get a slow gradual raise of the amperage so that it doesn't overload anything. So then we installed one on our rear AC. So just in case we can run one AC if we need to, in case we lost power or something like that. Once we got that 
Uh, first, a soft start installed. We could run it with the inverter and we can run other stuff too because it wouldn't have that huge spike and it worked well. But then we were like, well, in the summertime here in Florida, that's where we're at right now. You got to have two ACs running to keep this thing cool, especially when it's like 100 degrees outside. Kim works about like an hour away and I, I work as a fishing charter. Sometimes I'm out of cell phone signal reach and everything. So like if the animals are at home and we're both out kind of far away, if the power goes out, we want to make sure that the AC keeps running so it doesn't get hot and nothing bad happens to them. Because we've heard stories of where that has happened before. And that was like one of our biggest fears. So then we're like, we got to get a second inverter. Well, of course, our biggest fear is always fire. So maybe it's not our biggest fear, but our second biggest fear is uh, the loss of power and it getting hot in here, especially because we have two Frenchies, which they can't take the heat very well at all. Our puppy Lily, uh, she's much better at taking the heat. So uh, she would probably be okay for a while. But the other two, if it got that hot in here, it gets hot fast that the ACs aren't running in the summer. We decided we're going to get another inverter and eventually, hopefully, you know, be able to run when we're boondocking, we can run two ACs, the TV, the refrigerator, maybe a blow dryer, a microwave. You know, we can run three big things at once. But, you know, everybody keeps saying with one inverter, one big thing. So one inverter, one AC. What happened was the other day, the, the worst happened. Luckily, I was home in the RV and it, it's it's kind of a cooler time of year. We lost grid power. We, we had no shore power. The alarm was going off. And this is kind of what happened. All right, this is exactly why we have an inverter system that automatically takes over. No shore power. Um, our 50 amp outlet has been kind of finicky on us and it wiggled one time and it just does not come back on. We got no power coming in. So they're gonna have to switch out the breaker and the outlet and everything. So, but we never lost any interruption. We got the air conditioning running. Don't have to worry about it because we got plenty of power. By the time they get that all sorted out and switched out, never even really noticed. So I had to call maintenance and the guy had to come out and replace the whole breaker and uh, receptacle because it just went bad. So we would have no power. Like if I was offshore working and Kim was at work, which she's at work right now, then nobody would have known except for the fact that we have a waggle system and we have an inverter system that would kick over. I'm like, well, we don't have two inverters yet, so what if both ACs would have been on and it would have kicked the inverter off, then there would have been nothing. I'm like, oh man. So it got me thinking, and I had some free time this morning, so I was gonna do some more testing, load testing on the inverter. And uh, we have the electric heat here, and I was testing it on low and high, seeing how much water was being pulled, and then I would like kick on the microwave and test the with the heater on and then I turned the heater off and then I turned one AC on I turned the microwave on it would hold up so I'm like you know what I think we can run two ACs off this inverter I may be wrong but I'm gonna give it a shot I turned basically everything else off the TV the only thing that has power is like the fridge the Wi-Fi and uh, the computer Everything else is pretty much told, turned off or it's on a, the running DC. Like all the lights and stuff run on the DC 12-volt uh, system. All right, guys. So we're over here and we're only pulling like 80 watts right now. There's not a whole lot else on. You know, the lights and stuff are on, but that, like I said, that's running off uh, DC power, which you can see right down here, the 12-volt system. And so nothing else is running. And this is what we're going to do. We are going to kick on... The rear AC just dropped it down to 64 degrees so it'll kick on and you'll watch it pick up. See the fans going, the load picked up and you'll see when the compressor kicks on because it'll, it'll start to jump up but, not, but slowly instead of spiking it'll go slowly. I heard the, the kick on, see it's picking up and right now See, it's saying it's pulling like 1500 watts from the battery that's with the DC load and it's running about a, you know just under a thousand watts through the inverter I don't know how accurate this is but usually these ACs run 12 to 1300 watts and it's running a little less than that I don't know if it's because it has the 
soft start on it that it runs a little less than normal but we're going to do this now it's running fine so we're going to kick over to the front ac and watch that kick on so that's the fan just kicking on and then we'll see when the compressor kicks on which will be shortly it doesn't take too long I just heard it kick on you'll see it start to jump up see there it goes and see it's saying we're pulling about 2700 watts here but it's saying the AC load is only 1800 a little over 1800 watts the inverter is ready to run steady at 2400 watts constantly so I don't know how long it'll run like this but you know there's a big discrepancy between the 2700 watts here and the 1800 watts here but um, I don't know why it would be doing that but um, it's running both but you can see the red dot is blinking that means the inverter is overloading so I don't know how long it would run for but it's running it right now so I'm going to kick this back up and that's going to kick off and see it drop back down the red light stopped blinking so it's not overloading anymore I'm not sure how long that'll run for but usually with two ACs running it usually doesn't take too long for one of them kicks off but that's interesting to know that it will do it it'll run both ACs for how long I don't know and that's why we're definitely getting the second uh, inverter is so we can run both of them without having to worry about any overloading or stuff like that so but it's good to know that just in case two of them kick on usually one of them will kick off pretty quick we're pretty safe but it's still cooler weather time right now so it's not a real big issue but in the summertime we definitely want to have two inverters but it's nice to know it will it's not going to trip with two and it would, that would not be possible if we didn't have the soft starts so if you're running inverters or anything like that you definitely want to get soft start system it helps tremendously with that power management and hopefully we'll be able to get to that soon you know this is the big thing that we're almost done as soon as we get this inverter in the last thing we have to do is solar and i'm debating whether to go 2000 watts or 2500 watts and i'm probably leaning towards 2500 watts so if you want to find out what happens with all that mess you know hit that subscribe button notification bell all that fancy jazz i hope this uh helped you out that's why i'm sharing all this kind of stuff with you so hopefully it'll help you guys out if it did hit that subscribe button notification bell all that fancy jazz give this video a big thumbs up we greatly appreciate it and we'll see you guys on the next one bye